Hey, listen, this is Pastor Victor Reddish. I'm super excited about being with you on this morning. I pray that God is blessing your soul so far this morning. I'm always excited about prayer because prayer is just so amazing. I love just speaking prophetically over your life. I love decreeing and declaring things over your life. I tell you, God is going to do something so special for you on this amazing Thursday. It's going to be just so mind-blowing. It's going to be so awesome for you. I'm speaking blessings over your family. I'm speaking blessings over your life. I believe that things are already getting better better for you. I believe that God is opening up doors in your life. I believe that God is changing situations in your life. I believe that this is the day that the Lord has made and you will rejoice and be glad in it. I say this so much. I say this all the time that there's no such thing as a bad day. There's no such thing as a bad day. We might have some bad moments. We might have some bad seconds. But God truly tells us that everything he made and everything he does is good. And so when he put that scripture into play that this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I believe that, man, our praise is bigger than our circumstance. Our praise is bigger than our problems. Our praise is the solution of a breakthrough. Our praise is bigger than anything that what we may be facing. Because I realize that our praise will confuse the enemy. I tell you the truth, and if you can't praise him, my God, man, it's nothing like worship. Oh, my God. It's nothing like you may be, but you may be saying, listen, <clears throat> Pastor Reddish, man, I don't even feel worthy enough to lift my hands. Man, I don't even feel worthy enough to even to cry out to God. But one thing that I do know is, is that he know our thoughts. Ooh, he can read our thoughts. So you may not feel worthy enough to lift your hands. You may not feel worthy enough to call on his name. But man, if you might just be sitting there and you might just be meditating in your mind, he know your thoughts. That is such an awesome God. I love Jesus. I tell you, he is truly the head of my life. He's the head of my family life. I tell you, there's none like Jesus. I love how the scripture talks about that, how that he is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is so bad that what I love when the scripture talks about when he said he searched all over the heavens and he searched all under the heavens and under the earth and he still found none greater than him. Man, he is such a good God. You know, we serve a God that's undefeated. He never lost the battle. We serve a God that has never, ever lost the battle. Man, I'm talking about this thing right now. Um, I saw this amazing movie by George Foreman, man. It was so powerful. It was so prophetic, man, how that man, he was just angry and mad and upset. And man, he began to box and man, he began to fight, man. But man, I'll never forget this part of the movie where man, God gave him his Damascus. Man, he had just lost this fight, man. And man, how that he was in a locker room and he fell out and died. But our God visited him. Our God gave him such a breakthrough, gave him such a breakout. And man, he woke up, man, and got out of that vision got out of that experience and man God our God man gave him a visitation gave him an encounter and he told the people listen I found Jesus man he went from a boxer to man I found Jesus man I want to tell somebody that may be watching right now man that our God your God Jesus has a way of touching your life he has a way of giving you an encounter. He has a way of giving your son an encounter, giving your daddy an encounter. He has a way of that loved one you've been praying for to give you an encounter. He has a way of meeting them on their Damascus. I'm telling you, my friend, that the God that what we serve is so powerful. He is so all-knowing. He is so omnipotent, man. I'm telling you the truth. I'm super excited 
So, man, listen, Pastor, what, what, what word you got for us then? I hear what you're saying, but what is the word? It's Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, that what my prayer going to be centered around. Now unto him, God, he God, that is able to do exceedingly. This is this word, the scripture he, he gave you today. I, I, I want this to sink in your soul. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that what we ask or think according to the power, watch this, that worketh in us. Everything you need is already in you. Man, you got to utilize it. You got to speak that thing. You have to decree it. You have to declare it. He says to us that death and life, what is in the power of the tongue? Your mouth has power for you to get a breakthrough. Your mouth has power for you to get a breakout. Your mouth has power for you to get a promotion. Your mouth has power for your dreams and your goals and your visions to come back. You got to open your mouth and you got to speak it because he says to us, the power that worketh in us, he says, I've given you Power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you. I want to share this story with you to show you how much power and authority you have in your mouth. I want to show you in this real true story I'm about to tell you that how that when God declares that great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want to share this real story with you that when I'm telling you that he says now to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that what we can ask or think. I want to show you the power we have. True story. This lady spoke this story to me on yesterday. She talked about how that she was um, a property owner. And she talked about how that she had the police with her. Um, she was going and dealing with one of her tenants and, and, and how the people that was renting the house, um, they weren't doing what they supposed to do in the house. And so they had this pit bull, this pit bull with me. So they got to there, she had the locks milk because she was for to change the locks. They looked at her crazy. She said she went there. She said, man of God, I, I went to the house. And when I went to the house, she said, I told the locksmith, hey, we're going to go in that chain lock. And she said, man, that pit bull was barking. I said, man, we're foaming the bar. And my man's head was big and huge. And she said she was sitting up there like, man, I don't pay this money for this locksmith to come. I don't pay this money for the police on their time so they can come out here. And she said, I was sitting there. And she said, the, the, the pit bull was, was speaking and the pit bull was hollering. She said, man, they were like, man, we ain't going in that gate. We ain't doing this. But when God is giving you power and when you begin to revert the word of God and the strength and the anointing that's over your life, she remembered that the Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. She said she looked at that pit bull and she said she was at that gate and she got down on her knees and the police looked at like she was crazy. The locksmith looked at like she was crazy and she said she got down on her knees and she looked at that pit bull in that pit bull face. She said she was outside of the gate and she looked and said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this pit bull. I take authority. I rebuke now the enemy. I come against the devil. And she began to speak and decree and declare the word of the Lord and she said, when she stood back up, the police thought she was crazy. The, the lieutenant, all them, the people there, they thought she had done lost her mind. And she said she stood up and she opened that gate and she said, look at here, in Jesus' name, I command you now, Pitt, to sit. See, so they laughed at her. Ooh, God. They thought she was crazy. She opened that gate and she said, man, that pit went and sat down. Say so she began to walk up to the door and she looked at the, the guy, the locksmith, because that was her property. And the Bible does, does tell us everything that the soul our feet shall walk upon, it shall be given unto us. See, we talking about real power. It, it's in your mouth. It's, it, it's in your mouth. It, it, the, the, the creation of your goals and your dreams and the break. It's in your mouth. And she looked at that lot and said, come on, we're going up the channel. And she said, that man, look, I, said, I, I ain't walking. She said, trust me. 
he won't even get up. Man, she, that, he told that lot Smith, come on in. That lot Smith walked up there and said, the man, was sh- his hands were shaking, his fingers were dangling, and he trying to change the locks, and he was sitting out there doing that, and then this the part that touched me. She said, when they got done, that the owners of the dog, we're talking about a God that says that now to him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that what we could even ask or think according to the power that's within us we, we're talking about a God that has given us authority and has given us power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and over all that. we're talking about a God that have declared to us that great is he that is in us than he that is in the world and we got to utilize our power within our mouth. We can either speak death and speak negativity. It don't move God. We can speak complaining and worry. It don't move God. But when you begin to put God at his best and put God at his word, the owner said to her, hey, what have you done to our dog? The command that what they gave the dog didn't move. God, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm done right there. Woo, glory. The 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 words that what the, the that what the owners was like. Man, you have done something to our dog. You poisoned our dog, baby. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. We serve a God, man, that thing blow my mind today when he gave me this scripture. We serve a God, and he says it so clear, according to the power that worketh in us. How are you utilizing your power? Are you sitting there complaining? Are you sitting there putting your mouth on men and women of God? Or putting your mouth on your boss? Or putting your mouth on people? What, what are you doing with your mouth? Because all of this, it comes back to the mouth. He said now to him, this part, it blows my mind because verse 21 says, unto him be glory in the church. You you missed that. See, when you begin to utilize your mouth in the right way, it it brings glory to the church. When you begin, watch this, to use your mouth in the way that it's supposed to be used, man, God gives us a command that now unto him an undefeated God, now unto him a God that never lost a battle, now unto him that is able, he's able to bring you out. When your mouth line up with what he says, he's able to bring you out. He's able to give you the things you need. He's able to set your life on fire. He's able to, my God, to open up the heavens and pour you out blessings that you shall not have room enough to receive. He's able to make a pit bull to close his mouth and to give you authority to have him to sit. He's able, my God, to have you to speak and to decree and to declare and things change on your behalf because now unto him that is able to do exceedingly. I never saw this like this before. He woke me up with that. I never looked at it like that. You know I'm well able to do exceedingly and above all the what we ask. <laughs> we ask. And that, that what you can't ask, he says, I think. <laughs> when you don't have power to open your mouth to ask, you can think it. And he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that what we could ask or think. That, that what you can't ask him, you can think it and he'll do it. That, that what you can't get out your mouth, you can think it and he'll manifest it. Because you got to realize that when your mouth is flowing in the way that how he wants it to flow. You can't ask him to be an entrepreneur because you don't feel like you deserve it. (laughs) But you can thank it and he'll manifest it. You can't ask him to save mama. (laughs) You can't ask him to save daddy because you feel like, man, that'll never happen. But if you just think it, God help me. You can't ask him to give you a breakthrough because you don't feel like you deserve the breakthrough because all you see is your flaws and your filthiness. But if you think it, he'll do it. Oh God, I feel the whole. I'm trying to show you that you do see what he put in there. He said above all that what we ask or even think. 
Amen. I didn't feel worthy enough to ask him for a promotion. You may think that all you're supposed to be is a janitor. But if you think different, who as a man thinketh in his heart? Yeah. God, so is it. As you think about uh, you might don't feel worthy enough uh, to ask God to bless you with a, 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 a nice house uh, or to bless you with a nice job uh, or to bless you with a nice car or uh, to ask him to bless you to be debt free. You might not can't ask him, but if you thank him. Ain't he so gracious enough that even if you can't ask, you can think? <laughs> oh, God. Ain't he's God enough? Ain't he's merciful enough that if you can't ask it, you can just think it? <laughs> God, I, oh, that I, I feel the Lord. Ain't he's such a bad God because he never lost the battle and he don't want you to lose neither. But man, he is so God enough that even if I can't ask, I can just think it, God. He says, the key, according to the power that worketh in us, you have power. It's working in you. You have power. And that's why he says that all things work. <laughs> together for the good. <laughs> that's why he says all things work because you have power that's in you that work in us. That's why he says all things work together for the good to them that love God that are called according to his purpose. Are you using the power that's in you? He has already equipped you. Moses, when I called you from the backside of that mountain, I've already equipped you to be a deliverer. Who glory to God. When I called you and, and all of those excuses that what you make, I, you, 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 you don't understand. And, and that's why I had to write this in Ephesians to let them know that, that, that according to the power that worketh in you, I had to let them know that I'm able to do it. Because when I call you to do something, I've already equipped you. You just got to let it work. You got to get the anointing that's in your life. You don't see your calling you don't see your purpose. You don't see what you've been called to do when it's clouded with negativity, when it's clouded with foolishness, when it's clouded with complaining. You, you can't see the power that's that work of in you. You can't see it when all you see is your situation. Sir. You can't see it. And so Moses couldn't see that he was a deliverer already. And so that's why when he kept making excuses, sir, he couldn't see that the God that who we serve uh, was already working within him. And that's why he told him to tell them that I am that I am that sent me because it's already working in you. You already have the power in you. You already have it in you, but you can't see it. Well, that heart, oh man, that heart, that heart. <laughs> Ooh, when the heart is clouded, Ooh. because out of the abundance of it, you're going to speak. So if you're angry, if you're frustrated, guess what you're going to do when you get angry and frustrated? Ooh, you're just going to talk about the past. You're going to talk about all this other stuff. You're going to talk about what went on this year and last year and the year before then. You're going to talk about all that. But when, when God says here in Philippians, he says, you got to forget those things which are behind you. And you got to reach. You can't look this way and reach. You can't look in the past and reach. You have it in you. It's already in you. You have it in you, the power that worketh in you. That's a W-O-R, my God, K-E-T-H. You got a continuation of power that worketh in you. But you can't work. You can't work when distraction is there. You can't work when negativity. You can't work. You can't work. So I want to pray for you. 
the spirit of distraction to leave your mind mentally, emotionally, that the past will leave you and that you'll forget those things which are behind you, that you'll uh, reach forth to those things which are the cup. I want to awaken that power that's in you, that's working in you. I want to awaken it right now. I want to awaken it right now. And every demon that's trying to speak and every demonic spirit that's trying to speak in their life and, and every demonic spirit that's trying to describe, I put my foot on you in the name of Jesus and I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. Uh, loose now. Hey, loose it now. Loose it now. Loose now the voices, loose God. I rebuke now the voices, the voices, the voices, uh, the distractions, God, the plan of the enemy. I rebuke now in the name of Jesus, God. I release now the voices, the voices. Uh, I command the voices, God, to, of negativity, the voices, God, to, of every witchcraft and every demonic spirit. The voices now, God, to, of every my God can't. To, the voice now, God, to, that's trying to distract them now, God, from getting the word, God, and forgetting this prayer God and to get this God I rebuke now the voices God to every spirit every demonic every satanic attack I rebuke now every spell to be broken I come against it now my God in the name of Jesus God the phone call that's trying to come through the one that's speaking now trying to speak to them God the one that's speaking now God I rebuke now God the distraction God and let them hear the voice of God Divorce, divorce, divorce. Stop playing with God. Divorce, 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 God. I command every spirit of pettiness to loose their mind and to loose their thoughts and to loose their tongue, God. Divorce, God, that tell them, God, that they can't be used, God. Divorce, God, that tell them that they have no power, God. Divorce, God, that tells them that they don't matter, God. Divorce, God, that tell them that they're not good enough, God. Divorce, God, that tell them, God, that it'll never come to pass. It'll never happen to you. Divorce. God that fears that sits down on their tongue and sits down in their life uh, that rehearse the past and that rehearse my God the things that what they've been through God divorce God uh, on how they feel God about their jobs uh, and how they try to talk them from out their business and talk them from out of their jobs to talk them out of their finance God divorce God uh, that tells them God uh, that they'll never conquer uh, that they'll never go above uh, that they'll always be nothing uh, that they'll never come out of the valley God I command God that voice to loose them. Devil, don't play with me. In the name of Jesus, don't play with me. Don't play with me. I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. She's fearfully and wonderfully made. He is somebody. I come against it now. I come against his plan now. I come against your works now, devil. But they shall be that than what God has called them to be. It shall be that, than what God words that there be. I release the favor now, and I command the power that worketh in them will begin to come forth out of their mouth, and out of their heart, to come from out of the way that they see God. Give them your lens, Jesus. He said, he that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Because now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that what we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Hey, I speak victory over your life. This is yours truly, Pastor Victor Reddish. And as we say here all the time, let the past be the past. 